Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I'm an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Welcome to the Artist Friends Podcast. This is Monday, May the 4th. This is Clyde J. Kell, and you are listening to episode 44. It should have been episode 44 last week, but we had some extreme technical difficulties and some other issues that just got in the way of doing the show. So we're back. I am here with my two best artist friends, Constance and Diane. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hello, Constance. Hello, everyone. All right. Let's get things started here. You know, uh, Diane, you gave me the idea last week. That after the podcast was over with, you mentioned, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's quit talking about the coronavirus, you know, and we can't get away from it. It's, you know, in the news and everything, but, you yeah, know, let's talk about something else. So I thought about, okay, no coronavirus. All right we're going to share some funny art stories and as a working artist we all have uh, stories of strange things that's happened to us while we are painting or creating our art or dealings with customers and you know whatnot i mean uh and i think we ought to share them with our listeners so diane you got any story you want to start off with um i guess i i do um plain air painting so <laughs> frequently so I always have people coming up and asking questions and you know looking over your shoulder while you're painting and stuff and this one day there was somebody standing behind me and I didn't know they were there <laughs> and I backed into them and my bag was back there and they fell backwards over my bag oh, <laughs> and it was like oh my god but um yeah that's I mean, stuff like that happens and, and you know it's things you have to work with but <laughs> um and sometimes people just sneak up behind you and you're so concentrating on what you're working on Absolutely. that you don't even notice them and you know it's it was one of those situations um I imagine I, and other times huh no i can imagine i mean i concentrate just sitting there <laughs> in my doing my studio art and if somebody if i had somebody walk into the room or the door they'd probably, I'd probably give me a heart attack because i just concentrate so much you know yeah and focus i know sometimes i'm working and people ask questions and i'm i'm so focused on what i'm doing i don't even hear them it's like and then i turn around and they're like right there and they're wondering why i didn't answer the question but <laughs> oh she's such a good artist she's so stuck up you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably <laughs> uh, but well, i i'm plain air painting i, I mean I'm, i've 
painted out in the field with the goats and they're stealing my brushes and yes i i, I, I was helping waiting, me paint <laughs> I was waiting for you to share that story because you put up a picture uh I don't know, maybe a year ago two years ago of uh you painting and you could see your goats were you know behind you and, near, and were in the picture and you told you shared that story about how they would they grab your paint brushes and you know. yeah and they're chewing on your clothes and they're you know knocking the easel and it's like a moving target kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but you know once they you know settle down and stuff they're fine but when you initially set up they want to know what everything is and check it all out so it's yeah. kind of Diane with her goats. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Constance, you got any stories? Come on. You got to have a, a, a funny story here. And share share with our listeners. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know even, uh, yeah, you've had s several different shows and you've, uh, you know, where you sold your jewelry and you've had, you know. Oh, yeah. I used remember to do you the, told stories I about that. I used to that. do the shows on Saturday all the time in Pensacola and people were always just, blow, they blow your mind is what they do. You know, some of them come by and they'll, they just don't even question the price on the jewelry. They just pick it up and pay for it. And then other people will pick it up and look at it and go walking away and then come back and look at it again and go walking away. But you have to keep, because sometimes you don't know if they're trying to steal it or what, you know, so you have to keep a close eye on stuff, you know. Uh, and I've had stuff stolen off the table lots of times until I got this special box to put stuff in. And yeah. then then the show in Tulsa, a guy just tore the box up and took the rings. <laughs> I'm going, oh my gosh, you know. <laughs> well he doesn't play, you know, but it's, people, you were, people are crazy, you, you know. Out here in, o in Oklahoma City last year and I came by to visit you and I saw your you know your little rings. I didn't know about your little gadget there that you've got a an elastic string to those rings yeah to the more expensive rings they're like I that picked up that ring and i swear the whole <laughs> box came up with me with it what the heck? <laughs> oh, yeah a lot of people get very <laughs> surprised when they when they pick one of those rings up to look at it because it has a you know uh one of those like you put your keys on your belt you know where you can pull the pull the thing out and i mean it comes out a long way you know so but it does help theft because up until that time, you know, in Tulsa, I had not had another ring stolen from me unless it was an inexpensive one, you know. Uh, yes. But that guy, he took, two, he took two rings and he just tore the tray up. I'm going, dude, that's not cool. <laughs> yeah. And then Will, Will got on to me because later on I saw him standing in the aisle and I chased him down and said, you just, you stole my rings. He said, no, I didn't, no, I didn't. I said, yeah, you did. <laughs> well, got on to me after that, you know. It's, Don't do that. He says you're liable to get shot. Yeah, you know, I said I had. I wasn't even thinking about it. I was so angry because he took took something that I worked hard to make. You know. Exactly. Yep. I can understand that. Okay. Well, I know that's not very funny, but you know, it's kind of the stuff you have to put up with at art shows it's or funny, it's art fairs. Hey, you know, that's you know, that's what you have to put up with. You know, like you said. I um, I know I've shared this story before, but I'll share it again. Uh, sometimes I go through phases. Most of the majority of my art, I create it early in the morning, like between two and six in the morning for some reason. That seems to be I'm, I'm at my best, got my best creative juices. Sometimes if I don't sleep enough during the day, I get enough sleep, I, you know, I get kind of tired. So one, one time I, before I got myself an easel, I used to sit here and, and prop a painting. This is a painting like a 20 by 24 by 36 inch, you know, painting. I used to prop it on my knee and hold it with one hand and then paint. So I was doing that and it's like three, four o'clock in the morning, but I must've been really, really tired because all of a sudden I woke up, I had fallen asleep and didn't realize I had fallen asleep. When I woke up, my paintbrushes were on the floor. My hands were laying straight down. The painting was on the floor. Luckily, it fell down face up, so I didn't you know, damage it. I don't know how long I had been sleeping. <laughs> you know, I don't know if it was just 10 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever. But That's funny. I fell asleep working on art. How can I do that? <laughs> it can be relaxing at times. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so then, you know, I made sure I went out and bought myself a portable easel so I could, uh, you know, especially for the large paintings, I could put them up on yeah. it. So, you know, but, um, uh, and now I kind of, I kind of gauge myself. If I start getting really sleepy eyed then I just stop and go to bed. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to fall asleep yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, with get paint all over the floor and ruin the painting that I've you know, <laughs> been working on for hours. Yeah, yeah most of the time I, if they fall, they usually fall face down. Oh, absolutely. yeah, I've had several fall face down in the parking lot and end up with all that gravel in it and have to pick it mm -hmm. out and touch it up. So. Yeah, that happens a lot when you're playing air painting, wind and stuff. You have to really see for things. I was going to ask you, when you're playing air, I mean, don't you have problems with bugs getting in your paint and sticking Sometimes. to your Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. you can just let them dry, and then you can kind of brush them off. <laughs> Usually. Yeah. So, in other words, whenever we see, look at, a chance to look at Diane's paintings close up, and you see a lot of texture. <laughs> it not always be paint. Huh? They very well could be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that could be some bugs in there adding some texture to her. <laughs> they like uh, uh, painting amber. Yeah, Amber's ha amber has bugs in it. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Oh, boy. I've dropped several on their face out in the parking lot and then get home and have to touch them up. Uh, yeah, you usually have to wait down. The, I usually wait down my easel so it doesn't blow over. Yeah, but it does happen still if a strong gust comes up or something. Yeah, yeah. imagine. <laughs> I, I know you guys keep trying to get me out there. Eventually, I'll do it. <laughs> when all this virus stuff gets over, over with, then you know we can get out and not have to worry about the police coming by and telling us to go home. <laughs> when they open things up, they're starting to open it up here a little bit here in Oklahoma, so. I might be getting out before the summer's over with, you know. Eventually. There's lots of wide open spaces here. Yeah, I'm going to have to do a road trip to uh, yeah this place. You know, we got a we got a spare bed. Yeah, do some plain air painting there, constantly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you do There's there? lots of pastures around here, or we could go for a ride and go to Lake Eufaula and pick a place out there to paint. Yeah, we're going to have to set that up sometime in the future. Well, the other uh, recommended videos, by the way, uh, for our listeners, if you want to uh, look at the videos that I recommend, I put a page up. Go to www.talkartpodcast.com, and the links is all there for each week, and you can uh, follow along with what we're talking about. Some of the funny videos, uh, I found this British comedy video <laughs> of uh, – Bikini waxing. What'd you two think about that? That was hysterical. <laughs> you didn't watch it, Diane? Oh, my God. No, I uh, you, you've got to go watch that one, Diane, because it's hysterical. You will roll in the floor laughing. <laughs> the series, uh, Mr. Brown's Boys, yeah, I guess it's a very popular comedy series over in England, over in the UK. And it's like only you know, a couple of minutes long. <laughs> That one is hysterical. One. I missed them. I missed over it. I skipped over it. Yeah, I can't. I can't help but uh, laugh every time. <laughs> yeah, bust out when I watch. I I'd first seen it several years ago, and so I did a search on YouTube to see if oh, it's yeah. still there. If it's still up there. Yep. <laughs> then of course, Mikey, our favorite from Jerry's Art Artorama. You know, Mikey's Mikey's funny. Mikey trying to to uh, paint uh, by like Bob Ross. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he couldn't keep up with him. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh -uh. Then he didn't have all the colors or all the brushes, and he's going, "This is not a starter set. Everything's there's things missing." <laughs> he's getting frustrated, you know. You always tell, like, like constant notice. You can tell when he's getting frustrated because his neck gets red. <laughs> yeah. As he's get as he's getting more and more frustrated and and upset, his face just gets redder and redder, and his neck. He just you can tell how upset he's getting over how red he's getting. <laughs> I, I thought that was funny. It's funny. And then he had the video of uh, how to uh uh fold a fitted sheet. <laughs> now when I saw that <laughs> uh I'm with Mikey. I can't fold a fitted sheet. <laughs> years ago. Years I ago. Can't I was in the whole I do them the way he the video he watched, I do them that way. 
Yeah. Well, years ago when I was in the home. I take all the around the elastic. I pull it all up in one spot and fold it a couple of times and just do this with the shoe and just cram it into the shore. <laughs> so no, mine are not smooth. When I was in the hotel management business, one of the hotels I managed, we did we did the some of the laundry. Instead of sending the laundry out, we we uh, on site we did the towels and we did the sheet bed sheets, and we had fitted sheets. And the manager <laughs> was responsible to to swap the loads out, and then the housekeepers would show up after they got done cleaning rooms. They would show up and finish folding. But the manager was also, you know, I was, and they had a company training video that I watched, and everything. <laughs> I, for the life of me, could not fold a fitted sheet. I. <laughs> And my housekeeper, I, I hear you. I'm, you know, I'm there entertainment you time. They could hardly wait to come down there and watch me struggle because they it was entertainment for them. They enjoyed that. I I provided a comedy session for them. <laughs> I could never ever fold a fitted sheet. Never. <laughs> well, you know, I'm 69 years old and I still can't fold one. So what's that tell you? <laughs> I refuse to stand there for 20 minutes trying to make a fold of fitted sheet look good. I just take a, I mean, just had, take it and roll it up in a ball and flatten the, it out, stick it in the drawer. Size, and we had the king size and we had the extra king size. <laughs> forget it, forget it, forget it, forget it. <laughs> so when I saw Mikey that video, I'm with you, guy. I am with you. <laughs> I know. When we were little, my mother always, she was very particular about everything getting ironed and, you know, all that. So we learned how to do all that when we were little. We had to fold and iron and all that stuff. So I learned yeah. how to do it then. Well, we we didn't have fitted sheets when I was really, really small. Uh, but later on, you know, we got them. I don't I don't. Yeah, they had like my... box corners kind of or something mm -hmm. years ago. They didn't have the elastic on them. Mm-mm. Mm. Well, I don't own a fitted sheet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that solves that problem. <laughs> I, don't know. I won't have one in my house. No. I have, I, oh, my God. I, that's I, funny. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it, they're really simple to fold if you do it the way I do it. You just take the all the elastic part and just make the rest of it hang down and then just fold the elastic thing a couple of times and then roll it up in a ball and smash it. And it looks great. <laughs> That's the only way. I mean, I've tried to do it like they said to do it. This, I'm like Mikey. It's like, oh my gosh, this is too much trouble. <laughs> uh, I know my little dog's not gonna say anything to me about my sheets not being being goat lipped when I put it in the <laughs> put them in the drawer <laughs> or put them on the bed. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, we're just about ready to. Uh, this is a short podcast, short episode. We might want to touch on one last thing. Um, I also included a, a, a brief discussion about the myth of an artist's life. And what I'm talking about is it's, it's like a, I call it propaganda. It's perpetuated by the art world, by the elite art world. Okay. And I mean, maybe it came about when there was a novel that was written, uh, La Bohème, uh, and there was, you know, an opera made from a, of the starving the starving artists you know and that uh there's this cliche this what the cliche yeah a cliche exactly that's what the word i'm looking for the cliche of an artist that you know there is either a drug addict or alcohol addict or womanizer or or bed hopping wife swapping and whatever i mean you know female and male artists and yes some of our more the more popular and the more famous artists yes were that way you know i think it comes to mind picasso you know and <laughs> and some of the others but what i want to mention is what about the millions and millions of artists that are just hardworking, creative people. They raise their family. They want to provide a living for their family. They're, they get kind of ignored. You know, the art world tends to ignore them. And that 
bothers me. <laughs> and I, <laughs> well, I don't think, I, I mean, as far as artists being eccentric or whatever, I don't think they're any more so than any other segment of the population. <laughs> it's just for some reason that gets a focus. And Well, yes, that, 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 yeah, yeah. They, they, that's a good point because they really aren't. I mean, that's, you know, especially our modern society, you know, it's across all, all professions. But it seems to be, it's like this myth that's perpetual, Either, that that is, you know, it's propagandized, and, but in movies and theaters and, you know, and I use well, I think, yeah, I think some of it's because a lot of people don't really understand how artists live or how they, how we think, like, we're not normal kind of <laughs> in their eyes. So it's, you know, that kind of perpetuates it, I guess, but. Mm -hmm. I mean, most artists I know are hard. I mean, work hard, and we, it's we're more like a entrepreneur, and you know we're we're working on stuff all the time. It's like, yeah, you know, we're not frivolous and with our time and absolutely, you know, absolutely. yeah, business is there. It's what it is. I mean, yeah. yeah, when you're running a business or trying to run a business or start yourself up that way, it takes a lot of time and energy to learn how to do the modern you know internet thing and all the different ones that you have to learn in order to keep up and then painting on top of that and promoting yourself on top of that I mean, it gets it's deep <laughs> absolutely and those are the artists i want to speak up for you know those are the ones that i want you know that uh, because i mean i've talked to different artists that their relatives you know their parents especially young artists they want to be artists and their parents and no no you shouldn't do that and what they see they see the the picassos and the the other you know they yeah they're, they're romanced like, by it you yeah, know they see that 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 lifestyle is oh i don't want my daughter i don't want my son to have to have to pursue that kind of a lifestyle just just to you know make money well no you yeah. don't have to it's it's not that's those are special cases you know those are those are unique and unfortunately not everybody cuts their ear off for their girlfriend <laughs> yeah exactly I think, oh. <laughs> speaking of a funny story that's a long running joke between my uh, oldest daughter and i and uh, when i told her that i like van gogh her eyes got real big she's oh the guy cut his ear off yeah everybody knows that and i said i said yeah well we would we try to have you know a video call at least once a week and but sometimes she would miss it so i told her i sent her a message i said i'm gonna cut my ear off and send it to you if you miss the next video call it's been, oh no it, it became a long-running joke between us for about a month <laughs> or so and i said have you received any little packages no I said, well, if you, if you receive a small package don't open it yeah <laughs> And she would always. You're a funny dad. <laughs> she'd say, "Okay, help me." I'd have to show, tilt my head both sides so she could see I had both ears. Oh yeah. <laughs> so for about a month or so, it was fun, you know. <laughs> yeah, joking back fun. a little bit. Yeah, that's like you know, a myth right away. People know, you know. Wow, well, don't then go cut your ear off, give it to you to the prostitute, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, but so this this uh, and also in the movies, artists are more their lives are more glamorized and uh, you know, in, in a sense, and like I said, romantic, romantic. And that's just not the case. Artists <laughs> are people, hardworking people. We really are. Yeah. If you have to work be, hard, if you want to be successful, it's not only just working on your craft. It's like Diane said, you got to be an entrepreneur you know, on everything. Yeah. There's a lot of facets to it nowadays in order to just to keep, keep going you know you just have to keep grinding away at it hoping that you're gonna make good yep that's it so that's what we'll end. that's what we'll end um one good note very good note with uh you know talk about shows being canceled and everything i got an email today from my art box folks and they are going to go ahead see it was it was on suspension because they weren't sure if they were going to do it but art swiss art expo in august is going to take place. They got approval by the Swiss government has started opening it up and they plan to be fully open by August. And right. uh, they are going to have the art expo art expo and 
piece of my artwork is going to be on their eight foot digital display and I will be my art will be at Art Swiss Art Expo in the, in Zurich, Zurich Switzerland. So cool. pretty excited about that. Yeah, that's and, pretty cool. That was cool. I got into the Maryland State Arts Council show, which is now canceled because of the of the virus. Lord. So, but they're supposed to be doing a uh, digital one on you know online. So we'll see how that turns out. But oh, yeah, yeah. Um, art, the Affair of the Heart people are doing digital emails with different uh, people who had signed up, you know, that ha- go to those shows, that sell at those shows. They've been sending emails out every week with a link to each person's website. So that's okay. been good. And then uh, um, Tulsa Mayfest is uh, doing that also, sending, doing promotions about the different artists that you know because that got canceled for me too i did last year i did a show every weekend and then this year everything fell through yeah so, I know. Yeah, so it's it, it's been kind of rough you know yeah i'm just glad that you know i've been working on the internet presence because yep you know i don't feel like i was left out in left field because i wasn't <laughs> doing both you know so well, that uh, on that note, let's wrap up this episode 44 of the Artist Friends Podcast for May the 4th, 2020. And I'll say goodbye to Diane and Constance. And bye-bye, folks. Bye, Diane. Bye, Constance. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night, y'all. Bye-bye, folks. And thank you so much for listening. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constant Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constant Brosnan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license. Thank you for listening.